Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today I want to show off the latest build, which is basically a template for anything, but the challenge was for a lightning strike build, and I was getting kind of excited over it, so uh, it just had to be done, because I haven't done lightning strike in, I don't know, years, and every single time I've tried it, just as a quick test, it's felt pretty crap, but uh, actually fully committing into it and building for it, it's turned out to be pretty damn nice. You can see a large amount of the clear, or at least the feels good for this um, sort of setup, is going to be the explosion chest. And uh, I was doing fine up until then, but the explosion chest really does, uh, once you put it on, uh, change the entire aesthetic and the clear of the build. Now, uh, going into lightning strike, I had a feeling I needed to pull out all the stops to uh, make it pretty good. So this is an int stack uh, shaper, Dagger. Dagger, precisely, or specifically, just because I felt like daggers, but you can definitely do just hoa or um, claws or whatever. Uh, but int stack is the name of the game because uh, it's pretty damn powerful when going CI. You get a lot of percent energy shield through stacking int and then a lot of additional damage to your main attack. Uh, in the end, it seems like lightning strike should be pretty good for maybe several different setups, not specifically just this one. But yeah, it's actually working out real well once you get a few extra attacks. So we've got uh, Ancestral Coal, but I'd recently just upgraded into... Uh, awakened Ancestral Call, so there's three extra attacks there, and then an additional strike on the gloves. So four additional strikes means that for clear, it's pretty damn insane. Quite possibly the best clear I've had so far, or at least some of the most uh, reliable. And um, for single target, I think you do actually get these additional strikes in if you're still on the uh, perfect distance from a single target, from a boss. Uh, where you will try and attack with all the additional strikes as well. That's currently what it feels like. So Ancestral Call may end up being an endgame single target support gem, but I have yet to do any of the um, endgame sort of single target and put that fully to the test and uh, see if it actually does hit um, four times with the four additional strikes if you're standing at the perfect distance. Even if you are, it might still be a little too clumsy because standing at the perfect distance to a lot of enemies is a lot, like a lot of the time just too much to ask. So it's possible we just swap in something like a multi-strike and go ahead and um, face tank things instead. But so far it's been pretty damn solid on single target because I am using a cluster jewel that gives me up to 60% um, shock damage and our hits are rather large so we do actually get these shocks in quite a lot as you can see against this boss here for example just the um, Legion Templar boss and this character has been just destroying legions. Legions are uh, something I've actually started putting onto just about all of my maps uh, because I've got a lot of legion sextants and I was waiting for the rat character to come across before I thought it was worth just chain running legions and this is the one. It clears up the entire pack in sometimes just a few seconds and pops it early most of the time and then um, with all of our defense and berserking and whatnot you can actually do a lot of face tank if you need to but more often than not things just die in one shot instantly and uh, death is never really an option. Now this is going to be um, what looks like quite an expensive character. I think you can do it on a lot less gear because ultimately once you see my gear you're gonna be like Holy fucking shit, I can't play this character, but if you have, let's say, a much lighter budget, you'll simply have about a thousand less energy shield and maybe 20 to 30 percent less damage. And at this stage for clear, I've been doing nothing but juiced up maps um, from tier 1 to tier 11, I think, while leveling, and it's been more than overkill for all of these sorts of situations thus far. Uh, it's been pretty damn fast for leveling, and... Um, I don't know, Lightning Strike's just actually surprising me and may end up being my uh, most enjoyed build for the league. The title is still currently to Burning Arrow, but uh, this has just been such smooth sailing and such an enjoyable playstyle that it could end up being the favorite. And as I said, this is sort of a template. When you're doing something like a flat damage stacker, uh, it can be a template for just about anything else. So if you'd rather, you can definitely do something like Cobra Lash or Venom Gyre, or you can do um, Frost Blades, you can do Spectral Throw, which hasn't seen much use recently, and it might well be slightly better than this, but I've yet to 
um, even give it a shot because I'm trying to believe in the power of lightning strike. But uh, the best one, quite possibly for this entire setup, since this is an assassin with lots of movement speed, is uh, maybe Static Strike. Uh, the playstyle should be pretty insane if you can just pop a few stack strikes and go for a run and destroy everything on screen. And I'm sure I'll try out some other skills by the end of the character's progression just to see if I've been um, severely gimping myself by forcing lightning strike. But for now, I have not felt bad about the character and I haven't really felt like I need anything extra while doing this. We'll have to wait and see what the single target situation is going to be like because uh, I'm a little bit skeptical, but... I think maybe I've um, comfortably overgeared Lightning Strike at this point to be uh, just good enough for everything. So let's jump into how I've built the character. So here is the character, level 90 assassin called Please Don't Vile My Gear. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory because I was going to go pretty damn deep on this character for gear. And chat's a bunch of assholes who they were going to vile my gear. And they did. Um, so far, so good though. Uh, so nothing's really bricked. But uh, the basis of the character and the build was to go assassin. Typically your stat stacking characters aren't that heavy on crit, especially not lightning. Especially these days with the uh, cluster jewel notable supercharge where you can get lucky non-crits. But I thought assassin really just fitted this playstyle and it's a very old school throwback to uh, some old PoE builds, assassin or shadow lightning strike. So we are heavily invested into crit and then the passive tree uh, jumps all over the place to do lots of various things and I'll get to that in just a second but we are basing our character around this type of a mod. I kind of just got excited about um, the prospect of Awaken and Orbiting um, two separate mods together and that's why I wanted to go with Assassin and Lightning Penetration and Lightning Strike because um, I realized that if you can grab a Shaper weapon um, just craft 1 to 6 lightning damage on a weapon and then get a crusader weapon with attacks penetrate 15 slam the two together chances are you'll have some pretty good outcomes usually um, and in this scenario we got the outcome of an additional prefix with elemental penetration I then did some meta crafting which is uh, locking the three prefixes in by using prefixes cannot be changed uh, scouring and then slamming until I got a decent result and then I got um, crit multi decided to slam one more time got attack speed so I could afford to craft crit at this stage of the character I've got more than enough crit that this crit doesn't really do anything and uh, ideally I'd be crafting a better attack speed or a double damage focus right now um, but this one is still pretty good it it looks insane but trust me Awaken and Orbiting a Dagger together will probably yield you better results a lot of the time. And the best case scenario would be one that's just quite a lot faster, um, but has a spare prefix so that you can put hits can't be evaded on it, because fixing accuracy was a bit of a bitch in this character. Um, I then had this chest. I was going to Awaken Orb a chest of 12% um, int and the Explosion mod, and then ideally you just get to craft a bit of uh, Energy Shield on top of it as well. However, when I searched for these chests um, on trade, this one was already out there and basically as good as it could ever be, and it was 35 exalts. So given that I've got plenty of currency thanks to certain ventures recently, uh, I had to do it, and then it got vile and it hit one max all res. So like I said, this shit looks insane, but it's not build defining. Uh, if you just awaken a orb, int, and uh, explodey mod together you'll get something more often than not sometimes uh, pretty similar you might just not have the extra int roll and uh, you might not have as much energy shield but this isn't even that much energy shield because it's a hybrid mod uh, best case scenario you just have two spare prefixes multi-mod those extra uh, two energy shield rolls on and you have more energy shield but getting the int as well as the attributes is a, a bit of a bonus and then, like I said, this thing, I think you can make these pretty reliably as well. Uh, it's just about having the Awaken Robs and the starting capital to do so. Uh, then besides that, well, I'm reusing the rings from the previous character for int and stats because it's pretty hard to fill out um, dexterity and strength on this type of character as well. I then went ahead and crafted all new shit everywhere else. So I went with a uh, additional strike hunter glove. So to make these, I just alt regaled until something good happened and uh, we started with a hunter nearby um, target mod and then a big int roll and uh, that was after maybe 600 ults or so 
it's a pretty lucky roll i think but basically i'm ideally just regaling every single high interroll and every single um, strike roll until you get a good combination of stuff then um imprint regaled till we got something good uh the boots they were just chaos spammed trying to get lots of int a little bit of movement speed happened to get decent small energy shield roll and then some resists uh just you know lots of chaos spam onto some sorcerer boots and eventually something good will happen uh lots of um shrieking essences of spite onto a quality catalyzed hunter crystal belt and all we're really looking for is just combining the int and the attributes and then once again i meta crafted to like scour prefixes over and over just for the good of the memes but i made another one of these um over here and it similar sort of thing just percentage attributes and uh int and then strength all you're really looking for is to combine those two otherwise you could always just get a cyclopean coil as well it's not that much of a difference i don't think but uh i wanted to try and make my own items and uh had some good results either way uh, likewise um attribute catalyst on a crusader neck and then chaos spam trying to combine some int this one's probably slightly worse than my previous amulet that i was using on the other character but it had some resists and i really do need to fill out resists considering the entirety of the character has almost no resists on his gear uh then grabbed a hubris circlet which is hunter base or i slammed a hunter onto it but then had to re-roll anyway chaos spam until we got the int rolls and there we are with the int rolls a little bit of es not the worst for sure but uh could be a little better as far as the helm's concerned though it can't really be much better if you want both int rolls and then just grabbed a uh, shield put in a few dense fossils it actually took like three dense fossils to get a good roll like this and then i exalted 55 int so that's a little bit lucky and that's pretty much it for the gear i think so it does look kind of insane uh in the end we have 1600 int i think you'd still go a lot higher and i still am for the next few levels but uh as you know trying to balance it with crit and accuracy and energy shield it does make it a little bit harder to go fully all out on int but as far as the passive tree is concerned we do have a bit of funky travel we're still picking up the int we're getting some lightning nodes um here there here and we are somewhat focused on shock effect as well and then um my clusters are trying to do several things at once we do have uh just some disorienting display for the blind then overshock because i do think i'm going to be hitting hard enough to uh get them big 60 percenters in um storm drinker for a bit of extra lightning damage uh, penetration not a big deal and we can use energy leech if you don't get this for energy leech so that's also not super a big deal and then my last um little small nodes are using genius which is a mana small roll and i'm just using two points instead of three because uh the goal is to just get to this five int node but i'm not even sure that's correct because uh, energy from naught is still pretty damn good and you can still get lots of int on the small nodes too currently i am trying to do the genius but i also went with a megalomaniac that had genius and then i was trying to combine it with some other shit uh, i found one that had corrosive elements and bit of cold res bit of attack speed uh, offered one exalt and got that as well and then for our small nodes we are doing some warcry stuff not the usual warcry stuff that um is in a lot of other builds we're just stacking cry wolf like three times so it's um three times i think so yeah three cry wolves so that our rallying cry just gives a bit more percent uh increased damage uh, i don't think war cry here is all that amazing it's pretty good but not that amazing the main reason for war cries is getting rage up uh reliably because honestly if you're an attack based build and you're not getting rage and then having the use of berserk in this current league you're basically gimping yourself uh because there's so much shit coming out everywhere that berserk is just uh too good to not have as a little oh shit button so that's mostly why we're doing that uh we do have a lot of power charges so we went with this over here uh just a regular crit multi attack speed sort of jewel but the big use of a funky jewel here is the uh, thread of hope very large ring and that allows us to grab this energy shield node this uh int energy shield this big energy shield attack speed and attack speed and int um getting a lot of the really good stuff in this sort of region without any of the bullshit travel so it's a pretty good use of a thread of hope i think uh and probably worth doing but uh, i haven't really calculated i was just like yep that's cool i'm gonna do it and then over here we've got a transcendent spirit which is the upgraded form of a 
um, Temple Viridian Jewel that gives us a lot of extra accuracy and a bit less movement speed which kind of just negates one of our assassin bonuses for movement speed but it's so much accuracy and I really do need a lot of accuracy in this build that I couldn't not do it and as well as that it's three points so um, it's a couple of little int nodes not really the worst little travel there but it's so much accuracy I absolutely had to do it uh, even at the cost of a bit of movement speed. Uh, then got some dagger nodes and of course ghost reaver and ci uh, as far as the links are concerned it is a little bit tough to get these colors if you're uh, just trying to um, chrome something like this you want to get at least four off colors through the bench and then try and get some verici white sockets happening too otherwise you can start with a um, unsocketed sort of um, base and then go the uh, socket trick to go from three to four four to five over and over because we do want five off colors in the end I think you don't really want to use more than one blue currently I'm using awakened added lightning it's on roughly the same level as a lightning pen and pretty close to an energy leech so there's no real right move for your blue socket but that's what we're currently doing and then other than that we've got um, lightning strike which is a green attached to awaken ancestral coal inspiration damage on full life and early damage with attacks and I might try and play around with multi strike a little bit as well but you need a lot of attack speed for that to feel good not really currently there yet I don't think um, well at this point maybe we are but for a long time I haven't been uh, I've then got Curse on Hit and Assassin Mark attached to Herald of Thunder and Stormbrand. This is purely for like some heavy bosses because it's somewhere else on another bar. So we're almost never pressing Stormbrand. It's just through Herald of Thunder that we're getting a bit of curse action. But it's not super important to get this curse up anyway. Uh, over here we've got Enlighten, Arctic Armor and Discipline. I did have about 25% uh, mana unreserved. Wanted to just chuck something in there and I figured the thickness of arctic armor and also um, a bit of extra chill was worth doing. And then we've got uh, Ice Golem, Precision and Blood Rage. It's a max level precision because I need that accuracy. And over here we've got Berserk, Dash, Rallying Cry and Second Wind. And over here it's Faster Attacks, Shield Charge, Ancestral Protector and Fortify. And we do have Battle Cry so that our War Cry is instant. And it's just Rallying Cry. If you really wanted, you could also try and weave in Enduring Cry as well uh, for Endurance Charges. But having two War Cries feels pretty uncomfortable to me. So I'm only doing Rallying Cry. And currently, that's what it looks like. Vile Lightning Strike is working out pretty nice as well. At this level of gear, I'm rather surprised it's doing that much work. But um, yeah, Lightning Strike's been rather pleasant so far. I think on average, I've got about 2 million DPS for this individual Lightning Strike if we're not factoring in large shocks. But um, the prospect of hitting four additional times with this and this should increase our damage by a lot if we're hitting in the right scenario but i still have to fully test that i think that's how it works but i'm also pretty dumb in that regard so um maybe i'm just not on point with that we'll have to wait and see and if you want to know what the character looks like it's mostly the revenant set uh celestial hood some ice crown some harbinger eyes and uh rain cloud feels bad man uh, from arctic armor over the top of us with a lightning character effect that'll be it for this one for now thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time